Let's build some indoor shutters. So recently we made these shutters that are actually working functional shutters. And a lot of people commented on some social media outlets and said those would be great indoors. So it got me to thinking, why not do some indoor shutters? So let's do this. So this should be a very simple build. Let me show you what we're using. A little bit of wood on the trailer here. We're using one by fours, one by twos and a one by six. I don't know that this is gonna work out the way I have it in my mind, but we're gonna try it and see. We may have to change this as we go, but as for now, this is what I'm using. I've just got one one by six. It's all spruce, untreated because it's going indoors. It's a fairly inexpensive project as long as it works out the way that I think it will. So we're making these 50 inches long. And so if you've got a saw like this, you may not, you may just have a skill saw, whatever you've got. I've got this set at 50 inches so that I know all the boards are gonna be the same. So we're gonna cut, we're gonna go six wide per shutter. That's where we're going. The good thing about woodworking is you can do it how you want. Use one by sixes, one by eights. You can use whatever you wanna do at whatever length because your windows are gonna be different than this one, um, most likely. But we're set at 50 inches right here. We're gonna go ahead and cut 12, six per shutter. So here's one, the width of one shutter. And then here's the width of the other, but let me show you what uh, my plan is. Because these one before sometimes are they vary, three and a half inches, maybe three and five eighths, something like that. Just gonna measure this across. Now we need our shutters to be minimum 20 inches. This just happens to be 21 inches. So we're gonna go with this and cut some one by sixes and some one by twos to go straight across, and then cut some longer ones to go up through here. So here's where we're at right now. We've got our, you know, our foundation, our width is six wide. And then we come back with these two strips up through here, but we came across with this one by six here and here, and those are 21 inches, but you'll have to base it off your boards, obviously, if you're making this. And uh, these are, you know, whatever is left to basically the width of four of these uh inside of here now that's the design we're going with a lot of times when we do these we do like an x or you know some type of pattern like that but this one we're doing a little different because it's going inside and we have a, a nice little plan for these uh that hopefully will make it stand out but what we're going to do is we're going to come back and put brad nails in here normally we do screws but they're normally going outside considering this one's not going to get wet and it's gonna be in a climate controlled area, then I feel pretty safe doing like inch and a quarter brad nails in this uh, to hold it. So we're gonna try that out and see how it goes. Now where this one's a little different, we're gonna use these and we're gonna drill some holes and put these right in here, but we're gonna paint the tips of them black because this is gonna be white. And so these are just for looks, they're not holding anything, but we're gonna drill some holes. And then after we paint them and they dry, we're gonna take a mallet and kind of knock them in there. And uh, obviously just completely for looks, as you can see, kind of give it a little bit of a, I don't know, more rustic look, whatever you want to call it. But we're just drilling holes. And this is easy because the crack, the seam of your wood is three and a half inches. If we're doing it just like us and three and a half inches. And obviously we came down three quarters of an inch is the middle of this and then three and a half inches over and then three holes. And we're doing the same thing all the way up doing three, three and three. Once again, here's our bolts. These are one inch bolts because their thickness on our shutter is about one and a half. And so we've got them lined up here. Uh, these were 33 cents of each at our hardware store. Um, so, you know, not very much money to add. I think it adds enough to the looks to justify 33 cents a piece. And we're only using like 18 of them. And we're gonna use some flat spray paint and just, you know, spray paint the, um, tops of them and then beat them down in there with a the rubber mallet when we're completely done with it. That'll be the last thing that we do. All right, so we just lightly sanded our shutter down um, just to make sure that the edges were good and everything. Uh, not too concerned about getting it really, really good sanded, but that's just me, not too concerned about it. Now we're gonna paint this and I'm using just a Rust-Oleum white um, and we're gonna spray paint it. And then after it dries, we'll move on to our next step of putting our bolts in and see how that looks. Well, our shutter is almost dry. It's at least dry in this area, which is where we're gonna take our bolts that we spray painted. Um, 
and these are not functional at all but you can see where we spray painted the tops and they're dry and we're just going to take these and put them in each of these holes that we've pre-drilled and take a rubber mallet and knock them down in there and just keep right on going and like i said now these aren't serving a purpose at all they're just for looks is all they are so you don't necessarily have to do this or you could do something completely different if you wanted to all right so it's kind of a mess in here but we're working this is the window we're putting the indoor shutters on this is in our church up to a few weeks ago this was a dark plexiglass didn't let any light in we have an amazing guy in our church that changed it out to real glass now it lets tons of natural light in which is great but that is West, and we have several groups that meet in here sometimes throughout the week, Sunday nights, and there's a lot of light that comes in because the sun is coming straight in, and so we're kind of given an option to close that off if necessary, and they still have plenty of light coming through these doors, plus the light up here, but plus it's kind of cool and it'll look good. So we're putting a barn door rail up here, and then we're attaching our doors to it. I'll show you how we're doing that. So here's our barn rail, and you know obviously it has pre-drilled holes in it and in a perfect world those holes would match up with where your studs are but we don't live in a perfect world so this is where we put our header board in so we've got a header board which is just a one by four and we've got spots marked up here on the wall there there that's the bottom of our board because our rail is going to come up and be in the middle of that board and that is set just at the right level so that once we get the whole assembly on the door, the wheel and all, and it hangs down, then that means the door is gonna, you know, come in below that uh, there. So somewhere right in that range. But anyway, so we're gonna put the header board in and then we are going to mount this barn door rail uh, to that board. All right, so our rail is up and ready. Let me show you, you know, because here's our header. And then we just centered this um, the best we could. You know, we made sure that it was level all the way across. Uh, but, um, and then there's these that, um, they kind of like, they're stoppers. And we're not sure where they need to go yet, so we're going to leave them loose. Um, so you just put them on the end, slide, an end and slide them on like this. And then there's like a little place for an Allen wrench to tighten them up right there. But you can see behind here, our spacers all the way down through there. Um, makes it nice. So we are ready to hang some doors. So here's our doors and you can see that our bolts that we used, we spray painted black, just adds a little, you know, different touch to it. Um, and then our hardware that come with the barn door rail, all you do is drill holes straight through here and, you know, make sure they're lined up and then use those bolts to just tighten up. And then you've got your, your um, wheels on there, very secure. And then he already has one hung up over here and you can see how that goes. And uh, you can see how easy it is to go ahead and hang one. Um, here we go, he's hanging this one. It's that easy. So we have to adjust the stoppers a little bit. We're gonna put some handles on here as well so that we can keep fingerprints off. And we're gonna put some guides on the wall so that this right here does not happen. And of course we wouldn't want anything to fall on anybody. So we're gonna do that. And then we'll show you what it looks like when they open and close. So now these guides, at least it's what I'm calling them as guides. Uh, my experience, you have to buy these separately. Uh, I've dealt with them on the exterior, but have never really done any on the interior because there's not really need to because we've only done like doors and stuff like that. So, but you can see what the guides are for to keep your shutter or whatever from swaying out so far. And so that's mounted, but these are adjustable. You just, un, you know, loosen these up, back it up, adjust that, whatever, which we're going to do. Uh, but that's kind of the idea and um, that's how it's supposed to work and of course as they both shut then it stays on that so put some handles on we'll be done all right so there they are they are finished she's just going to show you what it looks like when we close them we put a couple of small little handles on there just so that we can keep fingerprints off and now you can see nice and then if you open it back up and uh, it's amazing.
and pretty inexpensive to do. So we're a total of about 200 all in. We got 70 in the barn rail and includes the wheels and stuff and the hardware. And then uh, the little guides down here at the bottom to keep it from swinging out are $15. All that we got on Amazon. I don't have anybody specifically we can recommend because we've ordered numerous ones for different ones and they're all the same pretty much. It's just really a matter of price and length. Uh, so whatever you choose. The handles we bought at our local hardware store for four or five dollars a piece. Time we bought the wood, the bolts that are in there, and the paint. Uh, we're about $200 uh, total. And it took um, about five or six hours to do it all, to cut, to do it all, and to hang it and do everything. So really an easy day project. Would look great hanging in a home, but for right now, they look great hanging in this room in our church. And we're able to close it if we want to or open it and let the light in. So hopefully this inspires your next indoor window shutter. Thanks for watching.